What's going on, buddy? My name is Season, and welcome back to another video. And today, guys, today we're going to get into cultural landscapes for AP Human Geography. I dropped my headset. I need to pick it up. Okay, it's picked up. It might fall again. No, don't. Okay, it's not going to. So, <laughs> we're going to get into cultural landscapes. So, what is a cultural landscape? Well, it has something to do with culture. It has something to do with landscapes. So it's got to be like a place or something to do with the place, but it's culture. It's the geographic area created by the physical environment and human development. So this reflects sequent occupants, which is interactions between culture in one given place. So let's look at an example. Here we have a cultural landscape of France. This photo was taken in France, and it shows uh, various elements of the culture in France. So it shows uh, our physical environment. So it shows there is a, a river, a body of water. There's trees. I don't know the names of these trees. Uh, but they are probably native to Europe um, because they look kind of older and they look a little bit more grown. But we see uh, French culture, like French architecture uh, as well. Uh, so that's a main thing. There's some signs here uh, that you may not be able to see. Those are probably going to have a language, primarily French, uh, showing linguistic characteristics of the cultural landscape. Uh, and it shows the cultures uh, and what they have done to the place. So they have left... A lot of the environment there they've kind of worked with it building bridges over the water uh instead of just building on the water and like moving it or something because technology is great nowadays uh so it shows kind of what they do how they work with the environment all right here is another place no it is not france can you guess uh what it is and i'll we'll just go through this as we go on so let's look at some places uh sorry, not places elements of the culture so we see uh french architecture so i said it's not france because of the similar French uh, architecture in this place. The buildings are kind of crowded together. Uh, but there is snow, so it's not going to be a place like <laughs> Florida. It hasn't snowed here since, uh, like, 89, I think. Uh, Christianity is represented through the Christmas decorations, and that is a Christian um, holiday. So Christianity is probably a prominent religion in this place. Uh, there's both men and women in this picture. Uh, it might be a little blurry, but there is men and women. So women aren't forbidden to go outside or something. But there's a lot of people outside. It's not really a big like war problem, I guess. Uh, there's no cars, but a little snow and trash can on the side of the house. So uh, vehicles have gone by. We see these trash cans. Um, I'll circle them for you. Uh, there's one. There's one right here as well. Uh, but those are trash cans. So maybe they have like a garbage man come by and take out uh, their trash. So that's some things to look at. And what place do you think this is? Or what region do you think this is? Well, this is Quebec, Canada. So it's going to be on the eastern side of Canada. Uh, and there's a lot of French characteristics here. Um, uh, so there's some English and French actually on the signs. And the reason for this is because of previous French colonization on the eastern side of Canada where Quebec is. So we see a lot of uh, French culture there uh, through the relocation uh, diffusion. Really, really cool. So yeah, we just analyzed the cultural landscape. Let's do another one. This one is not Quebec, Canada. Uh, so let's look through this. You probably know what it is just based off looking at it, but if you don't, that's okay. We'll continue going on about it. So we see urban area, and we see actually like cranes and stuff um, on these buildings. So it's definitely urbanizing still. It's not like completely developed. Uh, there's similar clothing, so they might be at an event, and it looks kind of religious, so it might be a religious event. Uh, and this is actually the Hajj, where... Uh, people go to this place uh, for Islam because uh, it's part of their, like, pillars, I think. I'm not Islamic, so I don't know everything about it. Uh, and there's hot weather. Uh, and this could be reflected by the umbrellas we can see in the sky that it looks kind of hot uh, as well. It looks um, not cold. We don't see snow or, like, ice and stuff. So it looks pretty hot. It might be a mild temperature, maybe in the 70s. Uh, there's a cluster of people, so the cluster of people could you know, signify about the events, or there's, there's a lot of people there. Uh, there's Islam Islamic architecture as well, so I could, like, circle that. Uh, this is Islamic architecture right here, so that's reflecting Islam. And this is Mecca, Saudi Arabia, where people go on the Hajj. Uh, so we can use that to kind of pinpoint our region. Islam is kind of popular in um, the Middle East. That's where its hearth is, Saudi Arabia. Uh, kind of explains where, why Mecca is important, just because there's a shrine right here. Uh, and are, they're pillars of Islam. They have to go to the Hajj, uh, to Mecca, at least at some point in their lives. All right, here's another thought. You probably know what this is <laughs> as well from looking at it. But if not, uh, that's totally fine. We'll go through it, uh, some elements of it. So we see the Chinese ethnicity in the pictures or just some Asian ethnicity in general. 
um, as well. We see Chinese culture, so we can see the language. We see these lanterns here. That is uh, Chinese culture. Uh, the flag as well. Uh, that's the China flag. <laughs> Uh, then we see globalization. So I see a McDonald's here in the background. So we see businesses kind of going international, uh, international, international, uh, going through various cultures uh, and impacting various societies and places. Uh, it is urbanized. We can definitely see that from all the buildings in the image. Uh, so it's very crowded. So it's probably developed uh, as we move up the stages of the demographic transition model, unit two. Uh, we see a higher population, as we see here in this very Chinese uh, society. And of course, we see urbanization take place as well, which leads to uh, a decrease in population growth, uh, crude birth rate. Uh, there's no cars as well. Uh, no cars, which uh, could mean that there's not room for cars. People can't maybe afford the cars, or it's just not part of the culture in general. Uh, and this is, in fact, uh, China. Very, We can piece that together by the culture. And then, I don't know why these are showing up later than they are. They shouldn't be doing this. But there is men and women. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that you can't always determine gender roles from a photo. And most of the time, you cannot do that. So, if you look at a photo and you see just men, that can't conclude that men are uh, dominant in the country. Or they have uh, gender roles. If we see a picture of China and there's just men in the image, we can't conclude that this place uh, in China is still adapted to Confucian standpoints where women are inferior to men. Uh... I think that's how you say it. I might be wrong. Uh, so we can't conclude that just from an image. All right, uh, here's the next one. If you know this place as well, that's great. We'll go through it as well. So it's a very crowded environment. So there might be a high uh, population. There's lots of trash. So it's not really clean. People don't really care about it. Uh, but it's not really developed as well. Um, so yeah. Uh, but it is uh, urbanized. We do see buildings. We see the clusters of people together. Uh, there's Hispanic architecture. So uh, this kind of style of buildings is pretty Hispanic. So we might be in uh, Latin America. Uh, there's technology. So there's uh, satellite dishes. There's like wires and stuff. So they do have some form of uh, technology. Uh, and this is um, Brazil. These are the favelas in Brazil, also known as squatter settlements. You learn about more about this in uh, Unit 6. Uh, and these are uh, kind of cool because they're very clustered areas. Squatter settlements develop because uh, urbanization happens so quickly that there's not enough space for the people in the urban city uh, that's also affordable. So they kind of build these uh, illegal settlements called uh, squatter settlements. And they have some of the culture elements and technology, but it's very crowded. There's lots of trash. It's not clean. Uh, there's high risk for uh, disease and all that. All right, and that's the end of the video. We just analyzed some cultural landscapes, and that's about it. Uh, so I want you guys to do the FRQ on the screen learning, uh, not learning, using what you've just learned. Um, some suggestions for videos you want to watch this. Please like and subscribe. It is free. Uh, it really does help me out and motivates me to do more videos. Uh, so yeah, uh, and you guys can watch the next video, which is on cultural patterns. And I'll see you guys then. Adios.